In the name of God, hello, good day. My name is Amin. My background is civil coastal engineering and my research interest is long-term coastal management planning at the presence of highly uncertain climate change impacts. I'm going to present long-term prediction of longshore sediment transport in the context of climate change. It is believed that human interventions in sediment supply and sediment transport processes together with climate change impacts on environmental drivers could lead to changes in equilibrium state of open sandy coast that could increase the risk of long-term coastal erosion. To make a balance between natural processes, human interventions and climate change impacts, we need sustainable coastal management plans. And to support those management plans, we need to predict coastal evolution. But prediction of coastal evolution is notoriously difficult. A number of coastal processes are controlling coastal evolution. They act in different temporal and spatial scales. For example, gradients in longshore sediment transport could be responsible for long-term shoreline evolution. It is claimed that climate change impacts on atmospheric circulation could lead to changes in wave climate in many coastal regions around the world. On the other hand, any changes in wave forcing conditions could result in significant changes in, in the patterns of longshore sediment transport. Even the impact of climate change on longshore sediment transport patterns and the resulting coastal erosion can be comparable to the impact of sea level rise. But the main challenge to project future patterns of longshore sediment transport is how to deal with uncertainty arising from different sources. Two types of uncertainty can be identified in coastal climate change studies. Intrinsic uncertainty that is inherent to climate change studies, we always have this type of uncertainty in projections. For example, we have different emission scenarios. The other type of uncertainty is epistemic uncertainty that is related to our limited knowledge about climate and coastal processes. For example, we have different coastal sediment transport models. To study climate change impacts on coastal sediment transport patterns, we need a modeling framework that consists of two parts, a part for estimation of climate change impacts on forcing conditions, and a part for estimation of coastal sediment transport patterns. The frameworks can be deterministic, ensemble, or probabilistic. The main sources of uncertainty in projection of wave-driven large or sediment transport patterns are classified in two categories, uncertainty related to wave forcing conditions and sediment transport models. First, we do not know what will happen to future climates, so we define different emission scenarios, such as different RCPs. To understand what will happen to future wind field and sea level pressure, we can use different GCMs with different settings. To understand what will happen to future offshore and nearshore waves, we can use different models with different settings and different wave transformation methods. And finally, to understand what would be the future patterns of longshore sediment transport, we can use different sediment transport models with different settings. It means that step by step, from global to regional to local scale, uncertainty grows and it leads to high level of uncertainty in sediment transport projections. To address uncertainty associated with the choice of longshore sediment transport models, we can look at two classes of models. Bar transport for VLOS that parameterize longshore sediment transport, they estimate total sediment transport by using wave and beach parameters and also they have some empirical coefficients. And the other types of uh, the other class of longshore sediment transport models are process based. Uh, they solve hydrodynamic and sediment transport equations. They can work with natural shape of coastal profiles and they provide us with more detail about cross shore distribution of longshore sediment transport. 
previous study, we tried to understand the role of intermodal uncertainty in projection of longshore sediment transport patterns. To do so, a shorter stretch of coastline of Gold Coast located in Australia was selected as the case study. Gold Coast shoreline experiences one of the largest rates of longshore sediment transport in the world. The predominance of southeasterly swell waves at this site results in a net longshore sediment transport to the north. The average long-term net north spot littoral drift of 500,000 cubic meters per year for southern Gold Coast and 635,000 cubic meters per year for northern Gold Coast have been reported. Additionally, uh, two of largest sand bypassing systems have been installed at the south and north of Gold Coast to mitigate the interruption of longshore drift caused by different reasons. The simple framework to investigate intermodal uncertainty consists of a three kilometer section of coastline, wave forcing conditions obtained from one GCM force wave simulation under one RCP, and a simple wave transformation method to transform whole time series of offshore waves to near shore, and an ensemble of sediment transport models, including bulk transport formulas of campus, modified campus, CERC, FANWINE, and two new formulas of Shari et al., and also a process-based model of LEADPAC. To set up the process-based model of LEADPAC, a representative mean coastal profile through analyzing the shape of measured coastal profiles and the corresponding wave climate of the northern Gold Coast was chosen. Uh, moreover, the beach slope of the mean coastal profile was used for the bar transport formulas. The yellow line in this figure is, is showing the profile selected for longshore sediment transport calculations. Then we use the CFSR driven waves as the forcing condition of longshore sediment transport models for the baseline period of 1979 to 2005 to calibrate the models. The criterion for calibration was reproducing the average long term net north spot littoral drift of 635,000 cubic meters per year for the baseline period. Uh, we used simple adjustment factors for bar transport formulas and for the process-based model, its free parameters were tuned. At the next step, we look at the data of GCM force weight simulations conducted by CSIRO and compared them with CFSR driven waves. And finally, we selected MRIC GCM three waves as the forcing condition of the calibrated longshore sediment transport. We realized that the projected future wave climate of this GCM indicates a 5% decrease in mean significant wave height. Besides, it seems that HS95, HS99 of future wave decreased by 7% compared to the baseline period. Also, 2% decrease in mean peak wave period compared to the baseline period is seen, but rotation of but rotation of future wave direction towards the east, particularly from June to October and November to January, is significant. It's about 5 to 10 degrees. Therefore, the projected changes in wave climate could lead to changes in uh, in the future patterns of longshore sediment transport. As the offshore waves of the studied area are a combination of modal and stormy conditions, the use of different longshore sediment transport models that give different responses to different wave climate could capture meaningful variations in the projected longshore sediment transport. So we look at the patterns of longshore sediment transport during stormy and modal conditions. 
as you can see, the campus formula during stormy conditions results in the least longshore sediment transport. Compared to the other models, the process-based model of DHR and fan wind formula estimates more longshore sediment transport during the stormy conditions. On the other hand, the process-based model during modal conditions underestimates the longshore sediment transport rate significantly. Afterwards, we analyzed and develop the results to examine intra- and interannual variability of longshore sediment transport to establish the range of uncertainty corresponding to the choice of longshore sediment transport models. These figures shows the seasonal variation in longshore sediment transport for both based on and future periods estimated by different models. Generally, the reason for the seasonal variations could be seasonal changes in mean wave direction and somewhat variations in significant wave height. Each model has estimated different magnitudes for monthly launch or sediment transport rate. The highlighted gray region shows the range of model uncertainty we decided to work with the mean ensemble of the results. The dashed line, the dashed line uh, indicates mean ensemble. The mean ensemble shows that the seasonal cycle of longshore sediment transport for the future period has changed slightly compared to the baseline period. The projected future longshore sediment transport rate shows a decrease for almost all months compared to the baseline period. In this figure, each box plot shows inter and inter annual variability of net longshore sediment transport for the baseline and future periods. Blue boxes are showing the results of the baseline and yellow boxes are showing the results of future period. Each colored column is indicating the result of each longshore sediment transport model. It seems that the process-based model results have significantly higher median standard deviation compared to the other models, while the results of bulk formulas of Shari et al. have lower standard deviation. If we look at the mean ensemble, it estimates that 11% decrease in mean annual longshore sediment transport for the future period compared to the baseline period is conceivable. Again, it should be pointed out only intermodal uncertainty has been sampled here. Hence, these results are not still applicable to coastal planning, where we need robust projections. In this study, intermodal uncertainty was investigated. However, intramodal uncertainty could be important. For example, uh, what would be the effect of different settings of the models, different coastal profiles, different beach slope, different free parameters of the model, sampling uncertainty from other main sources such as emission scenarios, global circulation models, wave transformation methods is required to develop probabilistic frameworks. Uh, such a frameworks tell us how much the projections are robust for decision-making systems. Thanks for your attention.